Hey guys, welcome to a brand new uh, React Daily video and today we're going to be talking about how to do uh, transitions in React with uh, CSS transitions. Now first of all, um, uh, first of all, this is the demo, right? It just has a hello world popping in and out with some beautiful op opacity changes. Uh, and actually the first thing I want to do is to go to bundle phobia and see how much weight does a React transition group put on our uh, package. So, you know, it, it takes like, um, you know, another 0.1 second for a phone to download it. Uh, but after all, you know, it, it's okay, right? It, it's okay. It's not, try to not use it if, if you only need like one simple transition that you can just achieve with uh, something like class names and with uh, a little change in toggling class names and CSS. Uh, but if you need a lot of transitioning stuff, uh, then start using CSS transition. Um, so, let me go over the code first uh, before uh, deleting some of it and then rewriting the essential parts. Uh, in our component, uh, really the only thing we're showing again is that hello world thing. And then it is this fade uh, thing, fade component right here that is applying the transition. Uh, so then the question is, what is fade? Now fade, uh, we can see right here is really just map. It's really just a like CSS transition. It's not doing anything else. Uh, and the reason uh, we are like uh, it's, it's properties right are also from here. So th the reason we're creating an extra component called fade is really just to uh, perhaps tell us what the CSS transition group is doing, right? Because um, I'm just saying CSS transition might not exactly. Uh, be appearance of what its objectives is. Maybe the class name is going to help you out a little bit. But we can, you know, we can create something called fade, and then it's not going to be, it's not taking a huge toll in performance at all. So, uh, so this in um, boolean right here is going to be passed to right here, right? Because uh, when we're creating a fade, we're passing the properties and onto the CSS transition. Uh, so we can re reread the code as if it's saying. Um, this dot state dot show. Uh, so, so what is this in doing? Um, whenever in is true, so in is going to control the the state of the div. As we can see here, the hello world thing by default it only has one state. It's just right there. But when, whenever we have in, uh, it's going to allow us to have four different states. One is called inter. One is called interactive. One is called exit, and one is called exit active. And the truth value to the in is going to um, is going to determine whether or not we're in enter or exit. Uh, and when it's true, it's actually enter. When it's false, it's exit. Uh, so of course we're going to be doing something that is going to be changing this in and out value, right? Or show value to det um, to and that is done right here with a set interval. Every two seconds, uh, we're setting the previous state to um, to the opposite. Uh, previous show to the opposite. Uh, so then every two seconds we're going in and out. And then another thing is that timeout right here is going to. A timeout right here is not. You can imagine it as the um, duration of an animation, but it's not exactly that. It's the time it takes for a DOM element to get out. <laughs> get out of the um, uh, of the DOM. Uh, so yeah, for one second we're going to be rendering the um, the what the hello world looks like when it's entering, and uh, after one second that thing is going to get out, and then we're going to render uh, whatever else. So it, it might still seem seem complexing because because um, you know we implemented this this, but um, where is the actual code that is um, you know controlling the opacity? And transparency of the uh, element because earlier we saw that hello world is fading in and out. Now, whenever you apply a CSS transition to uh, to some code, uh, you know this children thing inside of CSS transition, uh, four class names again is going to be given to you, and again it's inter interactive and and the uh, the exit ones, and the prefixes to those class names is going to be whatever you put in here. And then the suffixes are going to be again those four, uh, those four class name keys. Uh, so then you can apply those in your CSS file. Uh, and as we can see right here, when it's entering, the uh, the opacity is I mean it's it's appearance. Um, 
let's just show it again. Perhaps I can show it with better if I like come over to the class names right here. So at first, uh, it's going to be so enter is going to what happen is what is happening. Uh, what is wait, what is the how do you do comments in here? I think it's I forgot. Is it this? Yeah, it's this. Um, as soon as we enter the DOM. And in uh, interactive is going to be where we put put our transition. So inside of um, for in uh, 1000 seconds, we're going to go from this to this. And then, you know, uh, this is where as soon as we the uh, the dom node is exiting and then that right there is obviously um where the actual transition after it's exiting is going to be made and so we see it going back uh so right now i can see perhaps a confusion is oh yeah and this in when it's true again when this in is true, it corresponds to the enter things. And then when it's false, it's going to be corresponding to the exit things. Now, um, it, it, it makes it sound like that um, React transition group is only be taking care of, uh, you know, appearing and disappearing stuff. But of course, you know, you can change around with the opacity and make it into some other attributes, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, whatever. So that's it for this video, really. Um, I don't see the need to explain that much of the detail. Uh, it has a little bit, React Transition Group has a little bit of um, learning curve when you first get to it, because you got to remember that it applies four keys to you and you have to implement them inside of your CSS. Uh, one tip I guess I have for implementing the actual CSS transition is to constantly be using um not the uh, original not the class right here to see its properties but to use uh components uh so this is the react uh debugger that you have to download in chrome um yeah come over here i don't know what the, yeah to to show what the what the um state inside of your component is showing and what that in turn is um is reflecting onto the ui so maybe that's going to give you more clues instead of just seeing uh, the element class names because uh, showing the class names is only going to be showing you what's wrong with your CSS, uh, but showing your um, state is going to connect, is going to show you what is wrong with your, from your um, React code to your CSS. So that's going to be a lot of a lot more information. So hopefully you guys benefited a little bit from this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. And tomorrow I'll come up with a new video that is going to be doing how that is going to be talking about how to do transition without using CSS transition because uh, and and the benefit to that is it's going to be a lot light weighted right it's not going to take a huge toll on your um, uh, on your package download speed and maybe after all it doesn't really matter because downloading uh css transition i mean react transition group is only 0.1 seconds